Okay, let's check this out. We got this clip from Seven. I'm gonna bring down the volume. So I was looking at this and <clears throat> so I had a couple ideas in terms of um, the settings that you could put this in. Because again, this is your shot. You can do whatever you want to with it. It's just my my initial reaction was it's one of those classic. I mean, it's above waist, but it's kind of a classic chest view of a character in an empty scene talking with a lot of hand gestures. And there's a lot of movement still with the head down and the head up. That to me doesn't quite fit the audio. If you listen to how solemn the whole thing is, how can how can a person grow up with all of it around them? So sad. <laughs> I told him I didn't want to have it. I mean, you do hear the clinking and stuff from from the restaurant from the source in the movie. Uh, I get that, but I would still put that somewhere else. I mean, he could be in a hotel lobby or something, or just outside a restaurant or something. But. Um, it just feels a bit... It's just too classic for a character like that in an empty scene. Which, of course, I say this and there are plenty of great examples outside... Uh, outside... Online, where someone does really, really great acting pieces to stage exactly like that. Um, so it's not like it's... It's imperative. But the thing is, it just seems just too... It's just something we've seen a lot. Let's put it this way. And even if it was really well animated i mean i guess you know anything's okay when it's really well animated but i think there's still a couple animation problems where let's bring down the volume so overall it feels very chewy there's so much movement in the jaw and in the the mouth shapes then that is just there's always a hand gesture with everything when people do acting pieces like that stage like that and i know this seems just again a just a, too much of a classic move where it's just kind of an arm throw, like an arm, you know, throwaway gesture. That's just, it's just not as original as it could be. And you do it twice too. I mean, it's a different hand pose, but. So there's no, you know, to me, there's no contrast in that. Like the intensity, the energy is the same. You got this and you got that. Like which one is more important? And this seems, I don't know. And then, given how the voice is, it's just very quiet, which that's the delivery, and it's good delivery. But then this whoa, just seems so exaggerated. It seems so, just to me overanimated, just overacted. I thought about this one. Where that, on the other hand, you know, imagine he says everything like this, where he's just, you know, you could have someone over the shoulder looking here, and that would be your framing, this would be blurred out. And he's just kind of, he's just, he's embarrassed about what he's saying. There, there's so much torment and it's all just kind of staged like that where he's barely able to look at that person. And then at the end, even then I would that make that not as fast, not as dramatic there in terms of the speed, but then it can come up. I thought about this one. You know, and that's the moment where he, you know, he inhales and goes, all right, I'm going to say this. And I'm so embarrassed that, again, I can't hold eye contact. I would just not go as low with the pupils so we don't lose them. And you have some clipping plane problems that so we have to watch out in your camera uh, so it doesn't get that shimmering here. It's just too much with the eyes. And careful, you know, if if that person, again, is around here, and that's, let's pretend that's the framing here, you know, I think that would be good eyeline-wise. But then when you go down and over, now we're looking a bit more this way. Which, if you're saying that, well, he doesn't quite want to look into his eyes, and I would just stage it and look over here, pupil-wise. This seems like the almost the same as this, but just too off, where it seems kind of like a mistake. So, I like the idea of him looking, but then he can't hold eye contact. And then this would be, just don't go as low, then he can come back up here, but it would be screen right. That is, he still can't look at that person, but he's trying to. And then that as the end. Like, I think that to me is the most successful part, except that it's so big here. But the subtleties of that, I think, body-wise, uh, to me, are, is, is that's much more appealing. I would highly recommend that. That's to anybody who does, um, you know, lip sync, animation, performance pieces like that, to shoot reference, act things out, and put their hands behind their back, or just put them down. And like, what would you do, body-wise and head-wise, if you didn't have your arms? Just because that's just too overused. It's just a classic 
kind of zero meaning gesture, if that makes sense. But other than that, animation-wise, it still feels like the shape goes down here. Then you got moments where it's really drooping over here. And then you got that as shape here. And then it kind of changes again. It's just very, very swimmy and spliny. I would look at, well, okay. If I'm putting in asymmetry, is the character overall kind of like this? Is there always kind of a change where this side is mostly different than this? And I will keep that a bit more consistent. It's like if you have your your model sheets and I'm just randomly Googling animation model sheet face and this is the one that came up. But, you know, imagine that your character when you're animating it is where it's something like this where you go, okay, these are the expressions and I'm going to stay on model and it's not going to change. And by not changing, I mean, they're not going to be like so many different expressions where it feels like they're random. It doesn't feel like they're in character, if that makes sense. And then you also have, you know, like this side of the eyebrow really dramatically going down without really affecting this. It just feels like controllers are randomly moving instead of being part of a solid expression and going into another solid expression. My thing would be for this, <clears throat> A, besides kind of thinking about the setting, how to make, potentially make that a bit more interesting, a bit more original. Um, what is the character? What are the character expressions? Like, what's his, what's his character? <clears throat> and then go from very specific expressions where it's almost like you want to simplify your acting beats. It's almost like you have too many keys and you want to just get rid of a lot of them. Like, you want to bake out the whole animation on you know, every five frames or something. Or look or go into step mode again and, and just look at what are my key expressions and then how can I transition from them in a in a more clean fashion, in a more organized and um, just less busy fashion, if that makes sense. And in terms of setting, <clears throat> I, I wrote you an email here. Let me just uh, scroll through that. You know, what if he what if it's this guy, right? Let me switch to the other drawing here. But what if it's <clears throat> that person talking to that person you wouldn't have to animate much just kind of i mean even with the eye you know with the glasses you wouldn't see pupils that person is just there to talk and imagine they're both looking this way and this is your main character and he's also looking this way and at the very end when he goes um you know i thought about like, what's the line here i told her i didn't want to have it that's when he looks to this guy and this guy still doesn't really react because he might just be too shocked or just kind of listening but this could be <clears throat> this could be your your the frame of when he tells the other person that's the only change he has he looks over um or i have you know what if he's alone and he's on the phone with someone you know something like that where at least you know he could there's some moments where he's on the phone and then it could be something where um you know i didn't i didn't want to have it is it's almost like he's he stops talking to the person on the phone and he he takes he, he has the phone here and goes and then maybe he takes the phone down and just says it out into the room because now he's just back into into that memory and he's just so devastated by that. So there could be something with the prop and how he used the prop, where the prop is positioned to make it potentially a bit more interesting. I don't know, I saw this online and that was kind of funny. Old guys with a beard, it's awesome. But you know, there could be something where they're on the stairs talking or it could be one guy like this on the phone talking and you know, the music will be coming out from from back there and this could be a restaurant or something i mean it's, it's for the audience to imagine or if you just keep it simple i wrote that in the email i'll send it to you um if you if you just want him to talk you know something like that where to me it's interesting how much of this character is overtaking the frame and how there's not that much room and it makes it more uncomfortable for that person to talk about this on top of the uncomfortable subject matter there's something about the framing that could be interesting or just keep it classic more like this you know, there's a couple ways um, to do it like that. So I would say, let me know what you want to do. But these are just kind of minor impressions. Um, again, this is it's your shot. It's, you can do whatever you want. You write in the email that it cuts to another person. It's a woman looking at him. Um, I personally wouldn't do that just because that's exactly in the movie. You got Morgan Freeman talking and Gwyneth Paltrow looking at him with different reactions depending on what he's saying. And to me, that's just too close to, your, to the original. And, and that's why I'm suggesting what if he's in a different setting, he's alone on the phone or talking to another, another old person. Um, so there are different ways, I think, where you can take the original and make it something different. And it's, it's by putting it into a different set or adding another character, just so it's just a bit more original. But again, that's totally up to you. These are just my suggestions. Uh, let me know what you think. Thank you. All right. 
There's an email, you can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.